is up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 volkswagen arteon courtesy of hanover volkswagen in hanover pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so obviously we're in this one today because this is an extremely good looking sedan you also get two years or 20,000 miles of complimentary maintenance so that's going to save you a little bit of money there but there are actually some new standard features for the 2023 RT on so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a few different trim levels for the 2023 rtn first one being the se starting at forty three thousand ten dollars sel for forty seven thousand one hundred and eighty dollars and lastly the sel premium of course being the one that we have today starting at fifty thousand one hundred and seventy five dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant is going to be the same powering the beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 300 horsepower at around 5300 rpm 295 pound feet of torque coming in at 3600 rpm that power being sent to all four wheels through a seven speed dsg automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit but zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 4.6 seconds yes this acceleration test should be fun top speed 128 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 25 in the city 33 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration test here i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's actually a little button labeled mode go figure just to the left of the shifter that will give you eco comfort normal sport and custom adjusting things like the shift points of throttle responses steering sensitivity and actually the suspension settings as well which you don't usually see so that is pretty cool but anyways now i've got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and Let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here. All right, got it in sport driving mode here. Also got it in full manual shift mode. Go, baby. Oh, they're quick. <laughs> Dang, they're quick. Holy cow, they're quick. They are insanely quick. And if I didn't say it already, they're pretty quick. So... <laughs> I didn't expect that. I guess I should have because it's Volkswagen and typically Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche, they always do an amazing job with their paddle shifters. And that's definitely the case in the RT on like they're incredibly quick. So absolutely no issues there. If you want to have some fun on the weekends with the paddle shifters, you can do so because they are wonderful. But anyways, let's not give back full control to the car. I'm going to put the shifter back to the left here and uh, let's do one more acceleration here with the RTN having full control and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed all right so yet again another acceleration test here in three two one go delay i mean turbo lag is what i mean but <laughs> it's quick though once it gets up in the rpms it is dang quick without a doubt but yes there is turbo lag unfortunately that's typically what you find with turbocharged engines unless they have like a mild hybrid system having said that volkswagen if you want to add a mild hybrid system to the rtn that would more than likely eliminate that turbo lag and probably add some mpgs as well but anyways having said that still plenty quick you're not going to have any issues emerging onto the highway but anyways to go along with that acceleration as always braking is equally important and so up front you will find 13.4 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12.2 inch ventilated rear discs as far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes it comes in at 125 feet and since there's nobody behind me here braking's fine not as good of a braking feel as i would expect from a kind of sports sedan like the arteon but it's plenty fine it wouldn't affect me whatsoever i'd be fine with it but anyways then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension but also an adaptive damping suspension so that is pretty cool what is that i'm glad you asked essentially what that is is it's going to monitor each shock absorber individually not only adjusting to the road imperfections giving you a smooth ride but it's also going to kind of tighten up that suspension during heavy cornering, really giving you the best of both worlds. You got better handling, you got better ride quality. Having said that, I think we're on the most punishing road in Hanover right now. Let's see how it does. I did just put it in that comfort driving mode. Let's see if my mic bounces at all. That's gonna be the ultimate test. And you know what's funny? 
it is definitely adjustable because I just went down this road in sport driving mode and you could feel everything. But since I put it in comfort driving mode, that is a heck of a lot better. And that's the wonderful thing about adaptive damping suspensions. Having tested over 700 cars at this point, and that's not a flex by the way, I just wanted to emphasize that because there is a difference when you have an adaptive damping suspension. You can tell the difference substantially in terms of ride quality. So if you wanted that smoother ride, put it in the comfort driving mode. If you wanted to feel a little bit more of the road, but also get a little better acceleration and a little better steering feel, put it in the sport driving mode. So I guess you could say it has something for everyone. You got the custom mode too. So you can kind of tailor it to your own liking. But anyways, I guess I kind of covered the steering feel too. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 42 miles per hour right now. It's pretty much wonderful. It feels like a luxury sedan in here. There isn't a whole lot of road noise whatsoever. And wind noise, same thing. So it's wonderful. It's a very serene cabin in the RTN. As far as visibility goes, it's, it's fine. Honestly, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Not going to have any issues there. And rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on the RTN as well in terms of forward visibility. So if it detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's going to automatically throw on those windshield wipers for you. So just one last thing you got to worry about so you can better focus more of your attention on actually enjoying the drive because this is a pretty fun drive. But anyways, that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Volkswagen Arteon. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Volkswagen Arteon finished in deep black pearl. So if you're a fan of Pirates of the Caribbean, this is the color for you. But let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the letter W, indicating that the Volkswagen Arteon is actually built and assembled still in Germany, which isn't always the case with SUVs. Like I just test drove the uh, Atlas Cross Sport and that one is built and assembled in the US. So the fact that this one is made in Germany, that is pretty darn cool. But as always, let's go ahead and start up front of the Arteon here. LED headlights now come standard for all trim levels across the board. Believe it or not, they were not standard last year for 2022 but they are now standard this year so that is pretty cool but having said that an adaptive front lighting system is going to come standard on every single trim level across the board now i love that essentially what that is is when you're going around a bend at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a cyclist or a whatever the case or a bear so that is definitely a nice little safety feature there also love the LED daytime running lights. And I know that sounds like a boring feature, but they're actually incorporated into the front grille. Hopefully you guys can tell when I'm getting this shot right here, it kind of continues onto the front grille right through the Volkswagen emblem. So I love that look, it's very unique. It's unlike any other brand out there, but automatic feature of course, coming standard on this one. So when it starts to get dark out at night, the headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Automatic high beams coming on the SEL trim levels only Volkswagen. Put that on all trim levels. The base Corolla gets automatic high beams, man. I'm telling you, add that on all trim levels. I do like the R logo found in kind of the upper corner of the grill. That looks pretty darn good as well. Very low hood line too. I love that look. I love that this one is finished in black. It looks amazing in black. And this front end is definitely my favorite look without a doubt. You guys gotta agree with me there. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end. Let's now go ahead and check out the side of the Volkswagen Arteon. So now taking a look at the side of this one, chrome window surrounds do come standard. You will have some chrome accents found kind of on the side skirts. Really, it's just the bottom portion of the doors there. But anyways, that looks good. Also got that R badging that kind of continues onto the front fenders. That's a pretty nice accent piece there. Body color power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They will be heated with LED integrated turret signals then as well. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. You're going to find 18 inch alloys for the SE and then 20 inch alloys, aka what you guys are looking at right now for the SEL trim levels. But again, very good looking side silhouette here. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. So but now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, you kind of have that center high mount stop lamp. So always like that. A gloss black rear spoiler does come standard on the Arteon. And no, it's not body colored because we have the black exterior. I wanted to emphasize that. So even if you go with a white Arteon, you're still going to get the gloss black rear spoiler. So it looks good on black and black. I will say that. But anyways, LED taillights do come standard on this one. So a little added illumination at night there that looks good but i do have a gripe around the back of the rtn i will say that you guys kind of see it looks like we have integrated dual exhaust outlets those are fake and this is something that audi and volkswagen tends to do and i'm not a big fan of it I'm not going to put the exhaust outlets integrated into it don't make it look like you did just kind of uh don't do anything so anyways just underneath you will find dual exhaust outlets tucked away so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip. I 
And so but now since we are around to the back of the RTN, when it comes to opening that rear hatch, it is a power hatch or a power trunk, whatever you want to call it, but that is pretty darn cold. There's a button on the key file, but the coolest way to go ahead and open it up is the hidden way within the Volkswagen logo. And Volkswagen owners already know this, but most people don't that don't own a Volkswagen. If you press in on the upper portion of that Volkswagen logo, it's kind of like the 007 way to go ahead and open it up. So I love that. But anyways, once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 27.2 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there of course is a 60-40 split. So that bumps that up to 56.2 cubic feet. Ton of space for a sedan. There is some LED cargo lighting back there. There's also some grocery bag hooks, which typically you only find in SUVs, but very rarely on sedans. So I like that. There's some chrome plated tie down anchors, another SUV feature, but very rarely on sedans. So a big fan of that. A little bit of storage in the back corners as well. And if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, there is a spare tire as opposed to the fix the flat. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, ton of space, 40.2 inches. Anything over 40 inches is luxury good. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the rear seats here. Tries and climate control comes standard on every single trim level across the board. So not only do you have rear ventilation, obviously, but rear passengers can set their own temperatures as well. So I like that, but rear center armrest with cup holders does come standard. There is also a 12 volt power outlet and a phone charging port as well. And if you wanted heated rear seats, go with the premium trim level that we have today. But then make your way up to the front seats, VTEX leatherette seating for the SE trim. Leather seating though, coming with the SEL trim levels. Power adjustable front seats with power lumbar coming standard. Heated front seats also coming standard. But if you wanted ventilated front seats, go with the premium trim level. But overall, as far as seat comfort goes, plenty comfortable definitely no issues whatsoever when it comes to seat comfort here in this thing but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping of course it is manually adjustable leather wrapped for all trim levels across the board you got the flat bottom with the r insignia at the very bottom portion of it i like that and get this a heated steering wheel is now newly standard for 2023 and yes every trim level across the board is now going to get a heated steering wheel it used to be the last time i reviewed the rt on it used to be only the premium trim level, only the very top trim level got that, but not all of them get it. So well done Volkswagen. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. Got your Volkswagen logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock, that button to pop the rear hatch there. And then the times two button, that's gonna be a remote start for the SEL trim levels only. But ultimately it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the shifter. And so once started up, you have this 10 and a quarter inch full digital gauge cluster. I absolutely love it. It is going to change colors dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. But my favorite part about Volkswagen and Audi gauges is there's a view button on the right side of the steering wheel. If you press that, it completely changes the loadout of the gauges. So a bunch of different looks. It gives you your kind of classic or traditional looks with the tachometer and speedometer. But you could also choose to display just navigation up there if you wanted to. So I absolutely love that. I think that is a pretty cool look. And overall, Volkswagen and Audi do an absolutely amazing job with their gauges without a doubt. But anyways, then making our way to overall interior quality, there is a power sunroof for the SEL trim levels. Titan black headliner does come standard. You have an overhead sunglass holder coming standard as well. LED interior lighting also coming standard. That is pretty cool. I always like seeing that. Stainless steel pedal caps coming for all trim levels. Auto dimming rear view mirror, all trim levels as well. And I like the little compass with the home link controls for up to three different garage doors. That's pretty cool. Multicolor ambient lighting. SEL trim levels as well. Wireless phone charger, SEL trim levels yet again. So wireless phone charger, by the way, is located just in front of the shifter, but also right in front of the shifter, you have kind of the dual zone climate control in the front. And the cool thing about this is if you want to turn up and down the air, you kind of just slide your finger to the right and to the left. So it's not an actual physical button anymore. You just slide your finger. I love that. It's different. It's pretty cool. But anyways, just behind the shifter, you have an electromechanical parking brake. You have a couple cup holders and within the center armrest, a couple USB be charging ports and a uh, very little bit of storage in there but it's there nonetheless so anyways rtn definitely gets the job done in terms of interior quality here but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen because eight inch color touch screen display does come standard for all trim levels across the board bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that android auto apple carplay 
factory navigation system coming with that as well. You can check out your weather information, your stock information, also radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. You're gonna find eight speakers for the SE and R-Line trims, but then if you go with the premium that we got today, you're gonna to find a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. So that is the one that we have today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. You know what's interesting? So most Volkswagens, when you upgrade the sound system in any of their vehicles, it's usually Fender, but with the RT on, it's Harman Kardon. Harman Kardon's better. That was a wonderful sound system. Sorry, Fender. I have a Fender guitar, so I'm not biased or anything, but Harman Kardon did an excellent job with the RT on here, and uh, that sounds amazing. Ton of bass, clarity, it was crystal clear. I love it. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the RT on in reverse, you will find a rear view camera. Once again, not the clearest rear view camera out there, but yet again, it'll get the job done, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, IIHS top safety pick. So that's a pretty darn good start right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, forward collision warning with autonomous emergency braking, there's lane trace assist, emergency assist, and adaptive cruise control as well. Then if you were to go with the premium trim that we have today, you're also going to get front and rear parking sensors. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here, this thing is a very, very good looking sedan without a doubt. Definitely will turn some heads. IHS top safety pick, that means it's incredibly safe as well. So a nice combination there. Like the multicolor ambient lighting, as far as room for improvement goes, there is some turbo lag. Although having said that, it's still stupid quick once you get higher up in the RPMs, but I hate turbo lag that drives me nuts. It needs a hybrid system in my personal opinion if you're going to do that. Like BMW now does, like Mercedes Benz has done for a while, like Volvo does. And this is kind of competing with those cars because it's the same price range. So I'm just saying it needs a mild hybrid system to get rid of that turbo lag. It's also a bit more expensive than the competition. So keep that in mind. In my personal opinion though, if you got this much money, the looks kind of make up for it because this is probably one of the best looking sedans out there right now. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the new Arteon in the comments section below low and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i'll see you guys all in the next video stay gold <laughs>